And um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world tonight. My name is Grant Cameron, and I have a special guest with me. His name is Yossi Ronan, and he's a friend of mine. I've known him, I guess we did our first interview maybe a year or two years ago. And he is uh, one of the key experiencers that I think that people have to pay attention to. I encourage them to do a book. The book is now out, and he is joining us from Israel today. And um, I want to go through the book, and I want to go through the messages he got, and I hope that uh, people will learn something from this. I think it's a very important story. So uh, welcome, Yossi, and thanks for taking the time to talk to me today, and thanks particularly for taking the time to do the book and to get it out there, and it's out now. How long has this book uh, been on the market, do you think? It's a month now. Okay. And first, thank you for, for having me in your, uh, in your channel. It's yeah. very, I'm Beautiful. honored by that. Beautiful. So let's start at the, at the beginning here. Uh, we're talking about UFO experiences. We're talking about UFOs. Did you have any interest in UFOs or paranormal phenomena before you had the experience that led you uh, into this life and the, the book you've written? No, not at all. You know, it, it happened when I was uh, very young. I was 21 years old. And there was no any information about these things, not uh, that I heard. Uh, yeah. It was no internet then in 81. I didn't see any books about that. Uh, I, I was not uh, even interested in, uh, not in UFO, not in spiritual things, uh, nothing. I was very strictly on science that I was very curious about. And it happens, uh, you know, just like that, without any warning before. Uh, Interesting. You you said 21. That's exactly when I had my experience 80, about... Yeah, um, 81. 81. No, but I, yeah, you were 21 years old when it happened. That's how old I was. And I was ah. in the same situation that I had no interest in UFOs. And I got thrown down the rabbit hole. So we have the same sort of age there. Now, you weren't in Israel at the time when this happened. You were actually in the United States, correct? You were living in the United States? What were you doing? Yes. I was working with my brother. He has a little uh, business there, and he invited me to live with him, to live with him for, a year, for a year or something like that, and it was good for me to earn some money for school, for college, and, uh, and uh, it was uh, after, you know, a long day, hard work. We were uh, working on the area, they're painting houses at that time. Okay. And uh, we went to rest afternoon. It was only, it was a daytime. And uh, he went to rest in his room and I was uh, resting in the living room. And then I fall asleep and uh, then started what I was thinking, uh, it's a dream, but years after I understood it was an out-of-body uh, experience because I, I had uh, any information of this out-of-body experience. But what I was thinking that I'm suddenly dreaming that I'm at the same room looking at my, bo my body sleeping. You know, this is what I thought, it, it's a dream. And... Uh, and in that situation, it was very nice. I mean, I was very, um, I feel very good out of my body for the first time. And uh, I felt very light and happy and amused by the thing that I'm out of my body. And uh, in that situation, I didn't have any form of something. Uh, the, the body was on the sleep, on the bed. And I, I was like, I don't remember any form of something that was near the bed. It was only my consciousness. And this is one of the things that made the, the contact with them very strong and um, special for me because in that situation, I, I saw them <clears throat> in the uh, period of time that I'm out of my body. <clears throat> it was the first time that I saw them without the body. So it was very, it was a very different way of contacting. It was only consciousness. And um, 
in that situation that it's only consciousness and without the interfering of the body, the contact was very good. It was very pleasant. Uh, I knew that uh, I'm, uh, I know them. I, I was, I knew that I'm uh, dreaming or uh, out of my body. Then I understood it was out of my body. And, and I saw them in the room and I felt very natural with them. It's like, uh, um, like I know them. Uh, and we were, uh, they, they were very curious about the room. They were looking uh, at the things at the room, at the television, they were touching things. And, uh, and they, <laughs> yeah, one of them was standing near my bed, looking at my head. <laughs> and, and it seems like he's doing something like uh, watching, understanding, maybe helping something in me, something like that. And I was very happy that he's doing that. I don't remember what he done or what we, what was the connection in that period of time, because when I wake up, it was a great shock. So I don't remember what really happened or what was the connection, but I only remember it was very cheerful. They were like uh, children that uh, playing uh, and uh, having the, the experience being in a body and walking like a, a small child that that just learned to walk, you know, he's walking like a duck and uh, feeling um, amused by me walking on the floor. And um, and then I, uh, I wake up with my face to the wall and I I heard a strange noise in the room and I remember the weird dream that I had and I say to myself, well, what? What was this dream with green beings in the room that watching me uh, have a laugh with me? And what, what was this Im weird imagination that I had uh, with these uh, creatures with the black, big black eyes and this kind of stuff? And I heard the noise in the room and I got frightened that someone came in like a thief or something because I heard uh, a real noise in, from the room. And I turned, turned to the room, sat on the bed, and then I saw them. I saw the, the same creatures that was in my dream, and the, that, the one that was standing near my bed, near my head, was standing half a, met, half a meter near me, watching me face to face like this. Uh, and I was in, in a real shock. Uh, I got fright, uh, so frightened that it was, I mean, uh, it was a fear of death because uh, the first thing was that I thought that I'm uh, getting, uh, I'm losing my mind because it was two, two ways of thinking about that or that I lost my mind or that uh, I keep on dreaming and I think that I woke up and that's frightening itself. And I didn't know what to do. I touched my, I pinched myself and uh, try to uh, understand what is going on. It, and then I realized, realized that it's true. I'm, I'm sitting, I'm watching them. It's not a dream anymore. And they are standing there looking at me. And I think that they were not prepared for that too. I really don't know what happened there. It could be that uh, they meant me to wake up, I don't know, because uh, he, th they were standing, not doing nothing, and watching me with the, the deep fear that I had. And uh, the, the, the fear went even stronger because I, I started to feel that he is watching me inside, like he is no white what I'm thinking, he feels my fear. Is uh, he knows my my emotion, and and that that notion that he knows me was very frightening itself because I I, I felt very small and very weak <laughs> near them. And from uh, the the situation that I didn't have uh, any choice, I started to lower my fear 
because I thought maybe, uh, you know, a minute ago, I felt good with them and, and we were like knowing each other and, I, and we felt uh, lots of love to each other, like, like family, like friends. So maybe the fear now is my fear. And as I lowered my fear, I started to realize that uh, I, can, I can feel him the way he feel me. And the thing is that we are, they are connecting with me in a, in a way that we are sharing something together. It's like our consciousness is uh, connected now and I can, uh, and, and it's not a, a <coughs> something that they are doing to me. It's something that happened to us together. And uh, it's like, like they opened the channel to my consciousness and the, and the connection is that we are together now and sharing the same, sharing our consciousness. Now the, the yes. Yeah, now yeah. Let, me, let me ask you, how many, how many beings, and can you describe the beings and and particularly, how did you know it was a male? I don't know it was a male. I don't, I don't uh, recognize any, any specific uh, origins or, or a character of a male or a woman. It was, it was like the same. It, it was not, uh, it was not uh, a male or a female. I don't know how to define it. Okay, you, you were just, I just thought because you're using the may he, and that, that's one of the questions I always ask people, did they have any clothes on and did they have any sex organs? And did that, no. seem, peculiar, did that seem peculiar at the time? Because when I look back on cases, I say, something's wrong here. There's, there's something we're missing, yeah. you know, if, if that's missing. Yes, I didn't saw, I, they were naked and yep. I didn't saw any, any, Origins yeah. like that, not for a male and not for a female. And how many were there? <clears throat> I think people? four or five. I don't remember exactly. Uh, and only the, well, only the one was communicating with you? No, there, there were the one that was close to me. Uh, I, had, I had the first impression of connecting with him, but he was connected to the others. There were no limits of communication between them, so when I was connecting to him, I was connecting to them too. They were connected to each other, but they were not like one brain. They were, they, each one of them has his, his own consciousness, but it was very natural for them to have each other consciousness such, in such a way that they may be with me. And in that moment, I realized that we humans have this ability to, to communicate just like that. It's like we just, something happened to us and we got used to communicate with words and with uh, sentences and communication the way we do, but we have the ability to do it uh, differently. And, and what did they look like? <clears throat> It'll be on the book cover, but for people who haven't seen the book cover yet, we're gonna show your book cover, but describe yeah. what these beings look like. And have you heard of any other reports for people describing the beings that you saw, yeah, I think uh, there were there were small and big head uh, with the big uh, black eyes. They were green, not gray. You know, it's it looked similar to the gray grays one, but they were they were green. The eye was not. Uh, they were almond uh, straight ones, not not to the side. That's the way I saw them. But you know, I, I understood it <clears throat> very soon and in that meeting too, that the way the, I see them, it's part made by my way of translating something that it's not really, really physical. I mean, they, they, when they came, it's like it was something new for them. They, they like uh, <clears throat> managed to have a physical, appearance to 
feel the to be in the physical realm. It's like a dimension that they can and and they they know they have the knowledge to be in this di dimension. <clears throat> and the way they do that, it's not totally uh, physical. I I think that they can do it, but I don't know. When I saw them, I I felt that they hear that they are physical, but not totally physical. And that, that was the reason that the way my, like my brain translate what I see is forming it, is forming uh, in a way that was fit to my way of uh, maybe see them, understand them, even that I didn't saw any picture of them before. I looked for that, I thought maybe I saw it before, and then I formed them in a way that I remember, but I didn't see never, uh, I didn't see before something, something like them. <clears throat> so it was part of my interpretation. And I think many people have their own interpretation, but it's not, it's not like the differences are not the differences are imagination. It's more complicated that, that, than that. There is differences, with, differences between them, but it's not in the way that we differentiate things. It's a little bit different. It's more... Uh, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, no, when, when, when I, uh, you know, I use your quote that you used um, about this very thing in my emails, uh, they actually described this to you, didn't they? That they don't really, they're taking on a human body. They, they told you that, correct? Yes, I, I have that writing. It's a, it's a, it was a rare uh, <laughs> situation that I tried to write, you know, the, the writing with words, the connection was very, very, very hard because there were no words be between us, and I had to translate it to words. And our words are very limited to the things that we understand and know. And part of the communication was in the realm of things that we, we don't have words for that. So uh, I try to make the writing as much less with my understanding and intelligent. I wanted to have, I try to have writing that it's not with my own uh, thinking experience and uh, things I saw or read or something like that. And that time was a very rare time when I had the automatic writing without thinking about what I'm doing. I mean, I, I read what I wrote after that. So and describe that process. How does how does that happen? You're just sitting and and you put your you I you put the paper. Put or is it all, you, you just happen to be your hand just starts to write. No, I, I'm preparing for that. I'm I'm I have a question. Okay. And, it, and that time was questions questions about how to write my understanding in where in words, how to write it without misleading the, the their meaning. And uh, what I do, I do a meditation, and then uh, I put a paper, I, I holding a pen, and I let my hand dribble till I see that words came out. Now, I did it for, for many, many years, and only three or four times it suddenly happened that I got sentences with meaning that I can understand. And that was one of them. Is this uh, is this in Hebrew or in English? Your automatic writing. In Hebrew. Okay. And all the book is all the book is translation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. And and yeah. we can we can um, we're going to get into some of the stuff they told you. I was I was it's kind of interesting because you know that Desta, who helped you put the book together, she does the same thing. She uses a typewriter, but she gets into a state where she can ask questions and get these answers and doesn't really realize what the answer is until she reads it the next morning. So it's, it's kind yeah. of unusual. So did, 
do you think they taught you that or how did you uh, suddenly decide to do this? You know, I tr in, after the contact, I tried to really hard to understand what happened, what happened to me. And uh, it was obvious that it's something that happened to my consciousness. And the thing was that what happened, it was not in my spirit world, it was in my body world. I mean, the way that uh, I could uh, make the connection and remember that was because something physically happened to my brain that uh, made the change to my, to my way of senses, senses to work and then I could communicate with them. I mean, in the beginning, they do, I mean, they helped me to do that. <clears throat> but in, in the second that I felt myself doing that, it's like my brain knew that, or my body knew that, and could, could go there any time he wants. It's like they, they showed me a point in my brain that I can go back to there and, and have it. And have this way of uh, uh, working in my brain. And what, they, what happened actually is that it seems that the, there is a way that our parts of our brain can communicate with each other. They are doing it now, but they do it like, um, it's like, you know, we have two sides of the brain, the right one and the left one, and we have senses. What happened to me for a couple of hours af after the face-to-face -face contact that I could see very long distance without my glasses. I could smell sm things that I never had, I knew that they are. I could, I could, uh, what the amazing thing was that I could hear things that I see. I mean, I look at something and part of the image of what I see was formed with a sound, a, a particular sound. And that situation made the, the consciousness very, very open because each sense helped the other one. And the visual become very much more rich than, than the form of my eyes. It was, it was rich. It was richened with my, with the voice, with the frequency of voice, that made made it very much more richer and much more, uh, with much more data inside. Like, so. That and, only went on for a couple hours. You said right for yeah. during that one day, and when did the automatic writing stop? Start and stop. Because uh, you said four, five, a couple times you've done it. Yeah, it, it happened only a couple of years that of a lot of practice uh, to get into that um, situation with my willing to do that and controlling my body to do that again because I w my body was not into that. I mean, I, I had to to teach my body to go back to that situa situation without interfering it. Yeah. You did and mention that. Did you go back? How long did the actual experience take place? And talk a little bit about this being able to go back and sort of get more information from what happened during that short period of time. Uh, it was very short period of time because my body was in a very, uh, very different mode of, of uh, experiencing consciousness. It was very strong. Their consciousness is so strong that when we meet that consciousness, even that we have it, it's very strong for us too because, because we don't use to, to use this part of us. This part of us is very, it's like very high. It's a very high frequency something and our normal consciousness can get very confused from that that's why we feel fear it's a instinctive reaction to that very high frequency and uh, we got confused and we think that maybe we imagine imagine things 
because we don't know how to handle it. It's, it's very strong and different. And um, that's why the, they, the, the connection probably was uh, two minutes, not more. Because my, they, they felt my body getting, get, getting uh, cannot stand it anymore. It was too strong for them. It was like, like I'm, I'm so con concentrated on my higher self that it almost got out of my body and that's it. It's like, it's like uh, I'm so concentrated on my soul and I don't used to do that, that it almost... I, I don't know how to keep it together with my normal consciousness. So, so you, they, could, you could feel their vibration? Is that what you're saying? Are, are they vibrating at a higher level? Yes, but you, you, you know, I, I, I don't know. I didn't know how to recognize it, that no, it's a, vibra it's a vibra vibration. I just felt the immense uh, feeling of something very strong that happened to me. And my body is in a very, my body is, is tense. He, he cannot handle it. My body is afraid. And it's not really what's happened. It's not really what happened to my consciousness because my consciousness was calm. It's okay. It was, oh, it was okay for it. But the body was in a state of shock from that. Now, can you talk about going going back, like you said, that it was a short period of time, but you got enough information that you could do a book. So how did that take place? You, you mentioned to me before that you were able to sort of go back and tap into the field or whatever is happening there and pick up material. Explain how that happens. Yes, it, it, uh, it happens uh, many years ago when I started to write about the experience. I wanted to... Uh, simply write to myself what really happened there. And then I saw in the time that I'm uh, writing it in words that it was very different from the way I think in words. What I mean is that the connection was in a, like a very open space of, of a very different way of uh, reality. And, and I want to get that reality to our reality and explain it. And it was very hard. So I started to, to uh, find a way for my body to relax enough not to disturb my understanding and to write it even without interfering of my intellectual uh, thinking. Because the, the way they see things is much different. They see all the connection between the things that we separate, that we see separate. And this is the main thing. And they think that eventually what they want us to have is that ability to promote our, conscious, our consciousness from dualistic understanding to the one understanding. Beautiful. And, and that, that way of thinking is going to change everything. I mean, yeah. it's not that we, we're going to live anymore with this uh, separation between ourselves, between each other, between good and bad. And it's, I probably it's gonna start with our own, own uh, understanding of looking at the reality and the way our brain, brain works. Uh, and uh, there is a way for us to do that. I mean, Great. meditation- That would be the theme is, of the book. Before I get into the theme of the oneness thing, can you sort of clarify so you're encountering these beings. Do you always see them as ET? Do you still see them as ET beings, or what? What? Where do you think they came from? Well, the the thing is that 
we cannot separate it from many things, but what can I say from our, our you know, a world that we know to compare with something? The most closest thing to them was when I started to read the Bible after the contact, I was not interested in, in religion or nothing at all. I mean, for many years I looked for for our culture uh, experience and books and things that can be familiar with the contact that I had with them. Because I, I want to, to, le to learn more, to see if we have any similar thing. And I learned um, things, I, I read books, and when I met the Bible, the way they, they explain the angels fits exactly. Because it was, the, the, and it was in Hebrew. I mean, Hebrew helped me very much to understand them because I was writing in Hebrew and it was my tool. And the Bible is written in Hebrew and I saw that like um, the word angel in Hebrew is connected with doing work, doing work for someone. And what is the word for just for the, for my interest? Yes. Uh, angel in Hebrew is malach. Okay. And melacha is work. Okay. So malachim, angel in Hebrew, it means doing his work, his manifestation in our physical world. They, they manifest themselves here in the physical world to do things that they know or think or want to do behalf of him behalf of their understanding of him, of his willing or, and uh, they, they know God very, very uh, naturally and they live for that. I mean, all the, the, the things that they do is by knowing this God, but you know, it's much more deeper than, than our perception of God that we learn at school and we we understand it's much more deeper because it's a what I felt from them you know I, I don't have, I don't have any concept of God uh, only because of connecting with them I felt in their consciousness their understanding of God or they it, for them, it was like breathing. It was like everything that they are inside of. And they, they know that uh, this uh, made them be and made the world, made the stars, made everything. This thing that we call God, I don't know how they call it. I don't know if they have a name for that. Because it was their being. And then... Um, <clears throat> when when I uh, and that that thing that uh, is for them it what what we say God is everything and that's why it's the one I mean all the thing that connect everything for that for us is separate the connection is God I mean the the it's all parts inside of that God that one. That, that's why I think about oneness, that it's not only a concept of spiritual concept of be we are one or be good with each other, not only. It's not, this is the, the outcome of that. But the one is our reality. And we, we'll bit by bit, uh, getting to understand the, this oneness, this our real, our real uh, reality. What is beneath everything is one. And, and we, in our consciousness, bit by bit understand that. So this would be completely, and, and you know that I talk about this an awful lot, you're, you, the same idea that you talk about. A, a lot of the UFO community is still into the idea that um, these are 
almost like capitalist aliens, that they're here to steal our land, put us on reservations, and, uh, and the, this idea of me versus you. So you didn't get any impression of that at all. And almost like, and maybe you confirm, a lot of people will describe that they're on a mission or that these are like missionaries, uh, like you're saying, working for the one for God or whatever, that there's a mission. Did they give you a mission? And can you sort of talk about that whole thing? When you hear this in the UFO field about um, aliens being here for some sort of capitalist mission where they're going to steal stuff or, you know, enslave yeah. us or whatever. Yeah. This is a situation, you know, I, I met with that for many years, for 40 years from the, con from the contact that that's why I didn't talk about it for a long time because people were in a great fear from that and, uh, or, and they rather not to believe in that. It may be, <clears throat> many people say they're, they're probably because they are strong, they, they compare it to what happened here on earth that the strong, strong people control the, the weak ones. So we have an instinct free from that. But if we think about it a very simple way, if we looked at our culture, we are now in a situation that our knowledge became so uh, advanced that we can physically push a button and destroy ourselves. Like, and now we are in a situation that, that if we not get moral or more spiritual, and more understanding about the oneness, we're going to destroy ourselves. So I think this is true for everywhere. And if these aliens, these angels can come, can come here and doing these amazing things with their UFOs, with their body, never mind, they should be very spirit, high spiritual and moral because any other ways they will be destroyed long ago. So for me, it's, it's a real reason to understand very, in a simple way, what they are good and not bad. And what do you think their, their work was in terms of you? Is, is this a part of their mission to talk to you? And what's your mission? Why, why were you chosen for this encounter with them? Um, I don't think it was specific because the way they think is different. They see the one. And when they talk to me, they talk to the inner side of me that is connected to everyone, like everyone is connected. So I think that when they talk to someone, for them is talking to us. And the, the difference between in me maybe that made that happen was that some, something physically in me was in a situation, maybe it was, you know, if, um, in a situation that my conscious and unconscious can communicate a little bit easier from, and, and I could remember what happened there. It's not something special. You know, everyone that have a accident and bump his head and his head become very weak and his brain uh, had the damage, his consciousness get out of his body and he see things and go back. And when he remember what he saw there, it was very rich and he can he start to be spiritual because his body was a week for a couple of minutes so he could uh, have this experience and so I what I think is that probably the people that have this connection with them and remember that have something physical a little bit different to that they have a little bit close to their spiritual conscious because we have them both all the time and there is a window between them. And if the, if, you know, all the inspiration of music and, and the scientists have this uh, window a little bit bigger or they can use it or they can uh, open it or they understand how to do that. It's the window between uh, our ordinary conscious 
and the open conscious and the high conscious. The high conscious is connected to the one. Now, you, you had the experience both sort of in the out of body experience and then when you woke up. And a lot of people will sort of counter that with the idea, well, it was just an illusion, it was a hallucination or whatever. Was it as real as the real world? And because you hear this with people that come back from psychedelic experiences or near death experiences. How real were these two experiences in terms of the dream and waking up in terms of what you actually saw? Well, the, the, um, the minute that I opened my eyes and I saw them, I couldn't believe myself. And it's very straightforward. This, you see them and you know that they are not from here. So you have to decide you really see them or not and you can easily think that you don't see them and it's your imagination and uh, that's why you you you're not going to have a proof for that because it's something that is in between because they can be here and go they don't leave something uh, but if they want, probably they will, or they did. But in my, in my experience, they, they didn't left nothing. Only my body had this influence for a couple of hours. I could feel, know, understand things very much wider. And then that's that gone too. I, I didn't have nothing left from that. So that's why it's very easy to um, dismiss it like it never happened and maybe it's good because we in that way we we do it in the right uh, way slowly so it not damage us you know if we do it too fast we can be confused from that we are like uh, developing our understanding our consciousness for that and it's good that it's slow by bit by bit. But it seems that our, our situation is very dangerous now. That's why they came a lot. And they try to do things to help us, but they cannot do it totally. Because if they do it totally, it's, it's, it'd be too much for us and we cannot handle it. So we, they are letting us to understand it with ourselves. Many yeah, what, people... What, what? And what do you think your role in all this is in terms of, 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 because uh, you, you probably thought about that for the last 40 years. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think, I think uh, this book is one of the main things. And in the book, uh, there is a, a lot, the longest chapter is about uh, hypnotic regression that I did a couple of years after that. Oh, yeah. And in that hypnotic, the, I, I realized that I had a meeting in the age of three. Oh, okay. I didn't know this. Go ahead. And that I didn't remember it till that hypnotic regression. And uh, it was amazing because in that regression, when I got into the age of three, I remembered a communication that I had on that year, that communication was in a different dimension. And what the communication was, it was so long. It, it, it's like I can write a book only on that communication. And it came to me in a couple of seconds that I couldn't even talk about it with the reg regression and tell him what, I, what, what happening to me. So after the regression, I started to write about it. And part of that re regression, part of that communication was that he explained me something like, you know, when you're going to get older, your, your, uh, your world going to be in a dangerous place. And uh, we came to you as a child because your brain is your personality is not uh, yeah I don't know the word just like that yeah, yeah. You are the, the ego hasn't come online the the that's thing right. gets in the way the, the self the ego yeah 
Yes, that's right. And as a child, you can you can absorb all we say to you without thinking about it, with your intellectual way of understanding, and you can absorb that, and they will stay with you till the right time that you can use it if you want. All the time, it's my choice, it's our choice to use it or not. They don't force us to do nothing. And probably it happened after 40 years, you know. Uh, and, and I always knew that this book have to come out. You know, it, it was like uh, my whole life was uh, always uh, going in the way to, to write it. I knew that I have to do that. And in my, and I was afraid to do that because, you know, all the people I have to work, I have children. And what if the children, my children going to say to people, to his friends in school, hey, my father saw little aliens and uh, these things bother me so much. I was so afraid of that. So I, all, all, all the time I took, okay, okay, I will write it to myself and I write and I write and so I, I, I worked on that a lot and I understand a lot after so many years. So I could do, um, I, I could write very specific things that I can be, I'm in confidence that I understood and it's not a bad interpretation. So you have this in the book, the, how much of the regression is in the book? Do you do transcripts from the regression? Because it sounds great. Yes, I remember the, the regression very good. And uh, all the chapter, most of the chapter is in, on the situation that we had a, a talk when I was working with the alien when I was three years old with him. We were walking on a beach, not here, on a something that look look a, a sea beach on a different dimension. And uh, he was speaking to me and, and without words too. This is, was the most difficult way to write because I had to translate it to words that understand a, a, a boy three years old and keep it like that. I wanted to keep it very authentic for the people to understand it in their way too, not only mine. Because I knew for them that it is very important because my interpretation is very close, but it could stay much richer if anyone else will read it and understand it in his own specific way of understanding. He could understand more, much more things, a different things, his own way of understanding can get it in a more ways, not only mine. So I, I, I try to write it in a very authentic way, how, how, the way I understood it as a child. And then for a, chap, for a couple of pages, I, I explain what I understood from that connection. So, and, and you mentioned you're holding it back for many years. How, how did it actually work out with your family, with your friends? Because the book's been out now for a while. What kind of reactions have you gotten from people around you? Well, you know, for many years, I, I tried not to talk about that. And uh, each time I talk about that, the first time I talk about that, my mother was crying. I told that to my mother and she told me, okay, you took drugs. I know. <laughs> now I know that when you've been in Los Angeles, you probably had people that gave you drugs and you were high. She was crying and it's, it was very natural. I understood her, I can understand her. I mean, because you know, people that get high uh, on LSD or things like that can have the same exactly. contact yeah. because yeah. It's, it's a matter of consciousness and this yeah. drug do it yeah. the same yeah. and, they can, and they can contact beings. But because it, it was a drug, people say, you know, you imagine things. Yeah. But reality is with our imagination. Our imagination is part of our reality. And we can learn from it. You know, each dream that we have came from very high and wise us. The dream is our, our imagination 
that made a form of understanding for us to wake up and remember things for our benefit. So it's our higher self that is smarter than us, but it's us. And when you use these things wisely, because for the same reason, if, he, if it's too high for you and your body is not, re, is not ready for that chemical thing, it can be in, in a state of shock and be damaged. So it, it has to be very wise to use that because it's, a, it's something that you use from the outside to help you and it helps. But we can do it without nothing yeah. Yeah. because we have it. It's, it only happens, it only opens something that we have. Yeah. It didn't give us nothing. And, and your children, have, have your children got experiences as well? And what did they think about what, what dad was saying? Well, I, I try not to talk about that a lot, but I, they are now uh, 15 and 10. They are small children yet. So I try not to talk about it a lot, but when they're curious, they understand about the book and I told them, I answer they, their questions uh, very, in a very easy way. I don't, get, I don't get inside too much. But they develop a curiosity for that. And they don't have any so, so much uh, patience for this. You know, they're children. They, they don't want to read or something like that. They want to watch movies and uh, they got the, the, their ideas from, from uh, the movies and it's okay. They learn from that too. Wow. Uh, and so can you, uh, I want a little bit, a little bit more on the message, but can you tell us this is a very interesting story. When the beings were in your room, how did they leave? It's very interesting because people think, you know, jump on a spaceship and fly away back to their planet or whatever. So describe how they actually left the room. I found that a fascinating story. Yes, I, I, I uh, it was amazing because in the minute, I mean, in the time that it happened, it looked to me like a science fiction that probably, I don't know, I, I didn't understand why I see that. Because it, it, they, they went to the other side of the room, they hold hands in a circle, they were standing in a circle, hold hands and started to walk in a circle. And this walk become faster and faster in a circle, it, it, and then it became so fast, they can do that, I don't know how. They can make their body get faster and faster, and then they got transparent. I could see with my eyes that they start to go out of this dimension to a different one, because they became to be light. This circle became very, very fast and light and semi-transparent. And then this light, the circle of light become very small. And then it was so small that it disappeared from my eyes. And then I realized what happened there. It seems that other dimension is not the big vast thing that we think. It, it is very, very, very small that hold us. It's very weak for our thinking, but this is the way they think about things. They see all the connection, all the things together. And if you take, if you, if we try to measure the much, much smaller physical thing, we see that we can go inside and inside and inside and it's endless. And this endless point is the one is small. And we can understand it with time just the same. If we want to separate the past from the future and see what is the long, what is the a period of time of the present, we see that it's very small. And, and we, if, we, if we will dig it for the present, we see that it's endless small too, the present. So this endless small thing is a dimension it, itself. Why it's a dimension itself? Because everything is out of this small thing. This is the quantum field. 
This is the parts of the the nook, the the smaller parts of our physical uh, and of physical world that in that scientists can see. It's the much smaller than this that they cannot measure because it's not physical anymore. So this place is the 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 like the bridge between our physical world and the other dimension that it's so small that it's the basis of our all reality. And this is the quantum world. And this is our thinking too, because now people, the scientists begin to understand that our brain is not working like what they thought a computer that had a binary language of one and zero. It was using the dualic, dualic, dualic uh, difference to make the computer. And we had very advanced computer that working like that. But now we understand how to do a quantum computer that what, what give it the ability to do amazing thing it, is that he is working like the, he's working with the one and the zero together is connecting the the differences in and and understanding in a statistic way of being one and zero together this is one is two you see it's we, we start to understand how to use this oneness and now only from the mathematical and physical and techn technological way now one of the things that happened to us with this, it was very dangerous, and this is the nuclear, 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 nuclear. power. Yeah. The nuclear power is using this amazing force that is inside this nuclear, in this subatomic, because it's very strong there. And if we, we see what's going on, we see that the UFO started to come after the Hiroshima bomb. So they realized that we started to do things with our ability that can damage to ourselves, that we can ruin ourselves. That's why there are many stories that in the in the in the army of United States and all in Russia too, that these UFOs came and stopped the the nuclear missiles. The yeah. Yeah. They started to involve with that. So I, I see the connection between them. This small thing in time, in matter, in space, you know, time and space are the same thing. So you, you are you more, because um, a lot of people, experiencers will be shown the screen with the environmental devastation or the nuclear devastation. Do you feel um, very, very passionate about that more than the average person in terms of your experience that you were sort of given this sort of message that the world is in trouble and people have yes. to know what's going on? Because they, the part of the connection between them become, before they went, they did very strong thing that was different from the connection that was a, a sharing consciousness. They actually show me a movie that I'm inside of it. It's like they made me be in a movie. Okay. And they made me feel in a place and, and feeling situation, it's like I'm living there. Okay. And what they show me is, a, is a, the, the, I finally find myself in a very beautiful place in the blue sky in green grass and trees and cows uh, eating from the grass and uh, everything is okay and suddenly a strong fire burst from the horizon and burn everything and like they made me to feel it what it means and uh, then the, the feeling was it was my in my responsibility that this has happened I, like me is human and uh, <clears throat> the nature is, is not ours. We, you have, we have been given that. Yeah. And 
one something else that the cows when when they a second before they were burned they looked at my eyes that that's the way they show me the movie you know it's a movie wow. they show me a movie it's not a real thing it's not a profit of something that's gonna come they show me a movie to let me have inside this understanding that this is can happen try to try to avoid it and when the the cow looked at my eyes i felt that they are looking at me as someone that should protect them and the thing that should protect them it's not only our behavior with them it's our consciousness too it seems like that our the 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 way our consciousness consciousness works influence everything even the animals and the, in the book it's it's a continuing because i saw in the bible really really specific understanding of the same thing that they told me that our consciousness is much is influence on the on earth it's not only the problem that we do it's not, it's not only by the pollution it's with the pollution of our conscious environment with ourselves that make problem too to the world that uh, and when we will improve our consciousness nature it's nature will improve too and yeah, in the book it's going a long way and you, know? you you did mention i think when you saw the australian fires that it it made you reflect back to your vision this totally totally i saw pictures that were photographed there it, it was the same fire the same animals wow. and uh, it reminds me and uh, you know i really hope that it's not going to happen but you know the situation is now that someone can push a button and make it happen when you see the 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 images and the video from yoshima it's the same thing it's the same fire that i saw so it could be that they warn us from atomic uh, war it's not over yet maybe maybe it's this danger thing is really something that we should stop it could be something else it could be water i don't know yes. the thing the, the the main thing is that we have to uh, take Rin's possibility of what's going on here. Have you had any experiences since 1981 or is the only the experiences to do with the automatic writing where you can sort of tap into the field and, and get more information? Have you had, have they come back again? I try to invite them once again with my, with my attention to, to invite them to be near me and have another face to face contact. I couldn't do that. Okay. It was too much for me. But after that, uh, they uh, came in, in a way of a dream, a very specific and long dream that was obvious uh, connection between them because I, I can compare a normal dream than this dream. And in that dream, they, they uh, um, explain me many things that they are in the book and it's all connected all the all the information from all the years are connected to a very very uh, nice picture one picture one thing and what's the one thing i mean do they give you a they're, they're they're leading you to something and so maybe sum up the book for me in terms of um why is it important what is the main we sort of know the main message but maybe go over it again because i think you and i understand it but a lot of people when you say oneness they just go what whatever they yes. unless you've experienced it you don't it's hard to grasp that idea yes yes it's hard it's hard for me too yeah the this the the most beautiful place when i saw a uh, explanation of that oneness is the the way the bible treat the the paradise and the fruit of knowledge good and bad 
the secret there, the, we, we, don't read, we don't understand it, I think. Our religion don't see it in the way it should be because the fruit of good and bad, it's not the way we think now is to be good and not to be bad. The thing is that when they, before they ate the fruit, they were one with God. They were one with God. There was, that was paradise. And the fruit of knowledge of good and bad was a way of the, the, the human to digest the way he can separate, he can differentiate between the good and bad. That was not that they didn't have yet, but God had it. God can differentiate, yeah. but not separate. But when the men and women ate the fruit, and they started to see this is good, this is bad, they could not handle it and began to separate it. And this is the main thing. Our thinking now is separating, and that's why they fall from heaven, not from any other thing. They fall from heaven because their consciousness fell from be one and see, understand the oneness to understanding the the knowledge of good and bad. And the good and bad is in everything now. We live like that, and it's natural for us. And uh, in the, I think we, we're going to realize ways for us to change our thinking. And then this is, this is what's what going to help us to be good with each other. Between, uh, between ourselves in the beginning and then with, with each other, and then words like oneness and love and all of these things that they are not really in the, in the main thing of it, going to be opened and be very true. And because now love, peace, and God are words that we don't really understand what they mean. That we understand that we want that. But we don't really understand that love is connection between two things. Very simple. Love is the connection, is the oneness of two. All the all this old symbols of wise things, all the crop cycles, many, many things, the message there is oneness. And they try to let us understand it in a way that we can use it, not just say, okay, it's good to be, to be a good one and it's good to love, but really, really understand it and use it. And to be able to do that, you know, it, it's not simple. When you look at the, uh, the free survey, they say the number one message, of course, is one, which you've already mentioned, but the other one is love. You just brought up love. Did you sense this? A lot of experiences will, when they're in contact with the beings will, pick up the sense of unconditional love from the beings. Yes. yes, because the beings were inside this unconditional love because they feel that what is the base of our reality is love. Wow. This is, and each time we find love, we touch the basis of our reality. When we fall in love, the happiness, the paradise that we feel is not because of her or him. It's because of us touching, touching the oneness. She let us the ability for, for a while to understand the oneness by our emotions to her. But what really happened to us is that love to her opens the love to the oneness. Because love is oneness. Everything here is, you know, even, even when we made sex, it's going inside each other. And this is the most pleasant feeling is the be with each other. And this is the, it's like nature try to, uh, to, ex, to do it, to, our, to explain it to ourselves and let us go to the, to the, in this road. And another thing, you know, in Hebrew, the name God is El. El, the other meaning of El is direction. 
I'm going to the school, L, L school. L is the, the, the word that says going to place, a purpose, L. And when, when in Hebrew you say we have one God, actually we say we have one direction. Our direction is to the one. We are going to the one. So this is the real meaning of even the religion that tried to open us for that. Now it, it doesn't look like that because people using the religion for uh, controlling, for power, you know, not all of them, of course, most of them are good, but um, the main, the main thing that we have there is the ability and to go to the oneness. Wow. And, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate your sharing your story. I'm certainly going to promote it because um, I think it's better than the other versions of, of um, evil aliens and stuff like that, where I think you've, you've, you've picked up on, on um, I think the very important message that they want to get across. So, where your book is on Amazon? Yes, if you if you okay. write Yossi Ronen, you can find it. And you're open to do other interviews because I think I can get you some other interviews that I think uh, people would uh, profit by listening to your story. And um, uh, thanks for the friendship. Thanks for giving me the story. It's one of, as I say, it's one of the better stories uh, of experiencers that I think. Um, gives the answer of what's actually going on and because a lot of people get um they either like it as entertainment or they want to be scared by something or whatever but i think you have mm -hmm. expressed i think the true nature of what is actually going on here so i appreciate your sharing with me and uh i will do what i can to make sure your story gets out there and uh, have you got anything else planned in the future in terms of books or new projects or anything yes i i will uh, write a uh... I think uh, another one that is will be concentrated on the practical ways to open the oneness inside of each of us, inside of us. Wonderful. Thank you, Yossi. And uh, thank you. I, I want to I want to say thank you to you because uh, you know I don't think that. Uh, I, I would have the courage to get the book out without you. Well, you, you helped me very much with this. Well, I appreciate it. I, I hear stories, certain stories, and then I always say to people, have you written this down? I think you better write this down because it's almost like in the Bible, there's an expression, what profiteth a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So if you're given something by the beings, by God, if you become like a messenger working for God, it's, it, the onus is on us to get it out there. So whatever I can do to promote your story, I will do because I think you have the message that people need to hear.